walking in Paris. I come back to your youth, my Nana, as if I might clean off the mad woman you became, withered and constipated, howling in your own earphone. I come, in middle age, to find you at twenty, in high hair and long Victorian skirts, trudging Shanksmere fifteen miles a day in Paris because you could not afford a carriage. I have walked sixteen miles today. I have kept up. I read your Paris letters of 1890. Each night I take them to my thin bed and learn them as an actress does her lines. Dear home folks, you wrote, not knowing I would be your last home, not knowing I'd peel your life back to its start. What is so real as walking in your streets? I, too, have the sore toe you tend with cotton. In Paris, 1890 was yesterday, and 1940 never happened. The soiled uniform of the Nazi has been unraveled and re-knit and re-sold. To be occupied or conquered is nothing. To remain is all. Having come this far, I will go farther. You are my history the stealer of children, and I have entered you. I have deserted my husband and my children, the Negro issue, the late news, and the hot baths. My room in Paris, no more than a cell, is crammed with 58 pounds of books. They are all that is American and forgotten. I read your letters instead, putting your words into my life. Come, old woman. We will be sisters. We will price the menus in the small cafes, count francs, observe the tower where Marie Antoinette awaited her beheading, kneel by the rose window of Notre Dame, and let cloudy weather bear us home early to huddle by the weak stove in Madame's kitchen. We will set out tomorrow in stout shoes to buy a fur muff for our blue fingers. I take your arms boldly, each day a new excursion. Come, my sister. We are two virgins, our lives once more perfected and unused. <laughs>